Miss Myrtle Throg Morton, OBE pending, I believe, is from Surrey, and like so many others this summer, she's pitched her tent here in Scotland for a staycation. But of course, in her case, it's most likely to be a marquee. Well, top of her places to visit in Aberdeenshire, of course, is Haddo House, but it is locked up in lockdown. Though I believe she has blagged her way in on the grounds that she's a distant relation of the Gordons. Marvellous. Oh, absolutely. Here we are. Welcome, 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 welcome to my humble abode, my wee button bend. Just a small thing that I call home. Not, of course. No, no, no. This is Haddo House, former home of the Earls, Lords and Marquesses of Aberdeen, uh, the Gordon family, and now owned by the National Trust for Scotland. And like so many of us, it's been locked down or locked up. Well, not me personally, I haven't been locked up yet, but no, mothballed for the last few months. But the National Trust for Scotland have very kindly offered me a chance to have a wee kiki. So, why me? Who me is a, probably a better question, actually. Um, I am Miss Myrtle Throgmorton, OBE, pending. I don't really know what's happened to it, actually, to be honest. I think it's uh, maybe got lost in the post, but the Queen's got an awful lot on at the moment, hasn't she? I mean, she's got Harry and Meghan and the Andrew, formerly known as Prince. Um, and then, of course, there's Prince Philip, where none of us getting any younger. Oh, and Boris, well, least said about him, the better. But uh, anyway, she'll get round to it, I'm sure. But uh, so who am I? I am from Surrey, um, and uh, I, where I am chairman, for want of a less sexist term, of the Nicola. Yes, Nicola, after our small but perfectly formed leaderine, the nearly independent, or never independent, uh, you can take your pick, I'm a bit of a political tart, nearly or never independent Caledonian Old Ladies Association. I formed it with my dear friend Midriff Bulge. Of course, her name isn't really Midriff, no, it's Mildred. Uh, but Midriff is just rather stuck, as I find it does at our age, doesn't it? You know what I mean. We used to be Salmons, the Surrey Association for Lonely, Misplaced or Non-Domiciled Scots. Uh, but we've had to drop that, of course, because Alex, he's something of a hot potato at the moment. Oh, but who am I to talk? I mean, except for clearly I'm a lot more potato than hot. No, but anyway, like so many in the South, I decided to come to Scotland for a staycation. And my welcome has been, what is the word? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's been mixed, I think you would say, mixed, yes. And top of my list to visit, well worth a detour, was Haddo House in Aberdeenshire. But of course, it's shut. But I've come up with a wheeze. I'm never one to be thwarted. And I tried to persuade the National Trust that I can get in because I might be a distant relation. I concentrate now because there's a little bit of history here. The third Earl, it was a bit of a one. Yes, even the family called him the Wicked Earl, apparently. And anyway, he married someone called Catherine Hansen, Panson, something like that. Anyway, she was a, a cook in a pub in Yorkshire. And uh, apparently he enjoyed his chops so much that he went uh, to meet the cook where he had more chops or some other euphemism. I don't really know what he meant by that. But anyway, the next time he went back, uh, she invited him to marry her or die by producing a pistol. And he went for the marriage option. So she, he brought her back here in 1750 diddly squat and, uh, and they had a family. And then he had several other little families all around Aberdeenshire with many, many little Gordons. And so I think I might be related to one of those little, little Gordons. Uh, I suspect actually many of us are. And on that basis, I have uh, I've blagged my way in. Very nice of the NTS to, uh, to let me go in. So anyway, dears, uh, come in, come in. Don't, you know, as they say, come away in. Don't stay outside because it's, it's not the best of days. Come in, come in, come with me. Oh, isn't that marvellous? Electronic doors on the house of the sage. That's just extraordinary. I'm very impressed. Anyway, come in, come Oh, wait a minute. Mask, mask in these days of COVID. Look at that, a little tartan mask. There we are. Mask, I expect. Can you hear anything I'm saying now? You probably can't. Anyway, that's us ready. Hand sanitizer just there. Very good. Lovely. Oh, and music, music.
that. It was absolutely amazing. We're having to get have trouble speaking with these things, aren't we? I agree. Yeah, yes. I think we take them off. Yeah. Take them off. There we go. Oh my goodness, there's a lovely lady with a beautiful smile oh. underneath that oh mask. My goodness but, uh, me. I can't help notice your lipstick's just a little bit smeared. Oh, is it? Is it? Oh, right. We tend to eat it off, don't you? Yeah. You are a marvellous young man. I'm so yeah. delighted to meet you. What is yes, about, yes, isn't yes. it? I'm just going to see if we're exactly two metres apart. Oh, yeah. Gosh, uh, yes, yes. No, there you are. There do, we are. How about you? Play into this. Uh, speak into this. Is no, this no, 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 no. I'm not Laura Kunzberg, dear. Yeah, no, yes, no. Okay, now, I just yeah. wanted to check we were two metres apart, yeah. and I think we are, so we're perfectly safe. So now I can position my, my seat. Have you got one of these? These are marvellous. Oh, no, I love oh, one of these. Yes, uh, you, can, yeah. you can have a little sit down oh. and sh when you're shopping. I love it. Oh, so, yes. oh, excuse me. Oh, of course. It's like water. Yes, yes. So tell me. What, what are you, who are you? Well, I'm Frank from Aberdeen, and I've been around Haddo House for about 50 odd years. Oh, you can't with, have done, really? With, with, honestly, I, yeah. So, you, you've been here a lot, and you've been playing the accordion for some time, obviously. Yes, uh, since I was a little boy, um, and my fingers are now 80 years old, so... Oh, but the rest I, of you are strictly, absolutely <laughs> strictly. Just like a very, 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 very old fiddle. <laughs> yes, well, well, they get better, don't they? Stradivarius uh, well, well get done, better yes. with age, well I think. Done, yes, yes, that's uh, absolutely right. I absolutely adore Scottish dancing. I, I love it, though it is many years than I, that since I'd stripped my last white sergeant. But do you play for Scottish dancing, reels and, and all of that sort yes, of thing? Yes, Scottish country dancing and reels. I've seen you dancing with the Army Reel Club and Aberdeenshire Reel Club. I don't think you have, dear, because I live in Surrey, but it may be somebody who looks very like me. Well, perhaps, yes. Yes, yes, I, I think so. I think yeah. so. I would, I would love to uh, dance with the Ugly Reel Club. That would have been delightful. I've never met the Ugly Reel Club. Is of that course. a special group of ugly people? Yes, uh, yeah. yes. mostly yes. farmers and they're... Oh. they're, they're, they're Solicitor's accountants actually, and they dance all these lovely reels like the reel of the 51st Division and the, the Aitsome reel. And oh, now the 51st, that's the one that was invented by everybody's grandfather, wasn't it? It came from the battlefields in France, I think, oh, in I the Second, Second World War. And do right. all the reels have a, have a reason and a, a story behind them? Yes, usually. They, so they, they depict something that happened, like uh, the reel of the 51st depicts what, what happened on the battlefield, I think. Yeah, how did they shoot anybody? They were all busy burling round. Well, there's a more recent one from Afghanistan, in actual fact, where they, they, they have helicopters, uh, oh. you know, landing, and the rotors uh, are depicted in the dance with reels. Oh, no, I don't do heli helicopters. is that thing when you're lifted off the ground, isn't it? Uh, that's right, yes. I don't do that. I do. There is a point at which a, a woman has to have a little bit of decorum, and I do not leave the ground. Yes, Quite okay. frankly, because I can't afford the osteopaths for the poor gentlemen that have to lift me up. Okay. It's too expensive, it's too expensive. My but, apologies. But, uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. but it, it, is, it is a marvellous thing. I love the stories. Uh -huh. I'm very fond of Mari's wedding. I don't really know why. I'm rather hoping that one Let day... Let me tell you uh, uh, yeah. that your name, Myrtle, is mentioned in Mari's wedding. Now. Oh, as the goes of the warfare. Something to do with Myrtle Green and Bracken Brown. Oh, yeah. how marvellous. So yeah, I'm in no. a reel. I'm yeah. in Mary's wedding even. That's even better. Uh, that's right. Yes. Oh, that's uh, not, that's uh, super. Uh, uh, I think, Frank, I, I, I'm just longing for you to play me another little tune and uh, we could go on chatting for ages, but uh, I think probably we'd probably better move on. Yeah, um, that sounds good. Uh, would, would you play me something else as I leave? Yes, how about a little French number? Oh, uh, a little yeah. French number. That sounds, sounds slightly yes. saucy, but yes, a little French number would be delightful. Thank you so much. Oh! oh. You know, I really am when they get going with this Brexit thing once the COVID's finished. I think what I miss most is the languages, you know, they, 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 they talk about them being the Romance languages and I will miss them. Somebody the other day called me the formidable Miss Throgmorton and I thought to myself that was a little bit insulting. And then I thought, but in France, 
I would be formidable, which is so much more, more romantic, isn't it? Isn't that marvellous? And Signora, Signora, what a lovely word. And what do we have? Mrs. Mrs. Mind you, I'd settle for Mrs. if only somebody would ask. But uh, anyway, on we go. Steady as she goes, as they say in the boats. Here we go, my goodness, it's quite, quite a thing. This wasn't built for a shop, or was this? Oh, they have some marvellous paintings in this house. They really do, they're fine. This one's rather dirty, though, I think. Yes, no, I don't mean smutty dirty. No, 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 it's filthy. I, I don't mean filthy smutty. I'm not going anywhere with this, am I? No, it's very dark. It's very dark. You know, they thought they'd find a Raphael. They really did. And I wonder, I wonder if they've overlooked that one and it's a Rembrandt. Because he liked dark pictures, didn't he? He liked brown, burnt umber and sienna and Van Dyke brown. So I think that's possibly a Rembrandt that they've missed. I'll let them know when I meet them. Anyway, on we go. Oh, now this. This is magnificent. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, that is, I mean, I, I think, I think that's George, Lord Haddo, son of, uh, son of the third Earl we were speaking about. Or possibly the only legitimate one, but uh, one of his many children. But uh, and he's so what a fine figure of a man! Goodness, and he's so tall. He's so tall. I mean, he must be seven or eight foot tall. Remarkable. Oh, I do like that. And what have we got here? Some ladies. I'm never quite so interested in the ladies, if I'm absolutely honest. Uh, but I'm more interested in the men, but they're not so interested in me. But here we go. We're nearly at the top, Sherpa Judith. Do you know? If it wasn't for social distancing, I would have got a shover for this bit because it's quite difficult managing all these steps. But I'm nearly there. Yep, yep, that's us. Charming, charming little picture of these children stuck in a barrel load of potatoes. How lovely that is. Here we are. Lovely. And this, I think, I'm just going to check in here, is... Yes, this, this is the anteroom, I think. Isn't that a novel idea, actually, to have a, have a room purely for aunties? I think there's probably one for the uncles in the other wing. There'll be something corresponding, I'm sure. But uh, Now, this, I know. This is Queen Victoria, this bust. And she very kindly brought this when she was an overnight guest with the, with the uh, Gordons. Oh, I, something, 1750, something or other. Anyway, and she popped that in her overnight bag. Personally, I think it's a little OTT. I mean, if I go and stay with someone, I have something like a pot of marmalade or some after eight, something perishable that you can pop away. But this... This required something of an effort, didn't it? I can imagine her hostess saying, Oh, ma'am, how lovely, how terribly kind, a marble bust. If it wasn't for trades fortnight, we'd get the builders in on Monday to remodel the entire chimney breast to have somewhere to put it. Very kind, very kind. Anyway, oh, a little note, actually, uh, for the present queen. Should you ever come to visit me in Surrey, she might, you never know. I mean, I haven't got my OBE yet, so she might pop in. If you ever come, Mum, I'd be delighted to see you, but I'd be very happy just with a fridge magnet or something like that. I don't need I don't need a bust. No, no. But this, this one over here, this is her host. This is the person she came to see. This is uh, George, the fourth Earl of Aberdeen. He would give Richie Sunak a run for his money, wouldn't he? My word. Uh, Boris, of course, would be left in the blocks completely. No, mind you, who am I to talk? I'm thinking of going into politics, actually, myself, I am. Not for any uh, political conviction whatsoever, no, no, but purely, purely for the sexual harassment. When else am I going to get somebody's hand on my knee? No, any, I wouldn't mind his hand on my knee, I can tell you. Just three centuries out, what a tragic near miss. Anyway, off we go. Uh, this, oh, this is the drawing room. What a magnificent room. Absolutely marvellous. Look at that, look at that chandelier. That must be a devil to clean. Dear me. Absolutely extraordinary. And the marvellous thing about this room, it's sort of double aspect. You see, if you look here, you can see right the way up to a massive great urn at the end here. And then the other end, through the morning room here, you look up, 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 up the avenue. Isn't that amazing? And that, ladies and gentlemen at home, that is called a Scots Mile, apparently. So what is a Scots Mile, you want to know? Well, it is, I'm told, 1984 yards, not the usual 1760 that we're used to. Uh, in fact, George Orwell and George III, really, for those of you that are clever clogs that know your dates and your, your mileages and things like that. And it's a marvellous thing to know. I always use it if I'm speeding. If I'm stopped for speeding, I say, oh, no, officer, I was doing 70 miles per hour Scots 
miles per hour so I can go a little bit faster. Never works, never works, but it's worth a try. Anyway, this is just a lovely room. Look at this beautiful piano. That was a gift from that dishy Richie Sunak, uh, Lord Haddo, uh, to, um, to Mary, his daughter. And you can imagine the picture. There's Mary tinkling away on the ivories and uh, old Queen Victoria there just sitting, knitting or probably dozing in a chair and her hostess calmly handing round or even pointedly handing round the after eights. Note, ma'am, after eights, better than a bust. Anyway, and uh, this whole thing is just absolutely charming. This whole house has got such a history of art and music and, and connections with, with performers of all sorts. Uh, Philip Kemble uh, was an actor in the 18th something or other, and he used to stay here a lot. I don't know who he is either, but uh, he's a little bit before my time. But he came here so often, there's a seat named after him in the garden where he used to learn his lines. He was, a, he was a part of an acting dynasty, a bit like Michael Douglas and Kirk Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. So you could go out there and you can see Kemble's seat. Zeta's seat would have been a little bit better, wouldn't it? But uh, she's never been here, I don't think, which is a shame. Um, but no, people who have been here. Yes, there's, um, there's uh, well, it looks like Leon Trotsky, but I'm sure he hasn't been here. Leon Trotsky never played the oboe, I don't think. And I know that one. That one's Richard Baker. Do you remember Richard Baker? Marvellous man. And then this is... Uh, Yes, this, uh, and there, there, that's um, that's so oh, thingamajig. You know, you know the one that da, 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 that one. You know, the one the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, doesn't it always go? All those names and faces and things. There are more over here. There's lovely ones here. Oh, there's a lot of royals here. I just do a little curtsy to all those royals. It's marvellous. Mar oh my word, though. Look at this. They've got a terrible infestation of ivy all over the walls. It's in both rooms. It is. It's here as well. Goodness me, you'd think you could get something like Jay's Fluid or Roundup to do something about that, couldn't you? I, I think they could clear that up in a jiffy if they got something strong enough. Oh, and my goodness, what a piece of serendipity. Here's just the man to tell us all about it. The man who would know everything one needs to know about Ivy and a lot more besides. Jim McCall of the Beach Club Garden. How lovely to see you, Jim. Now, you're wearing your mask. I'm just going to get my wee stick out. Yeah. Because this is my two meter stick, and if I, if I extend it to its full whatever it is, well, there we go. See that? There we are. You can take your mask off, I think, now if you'd like to, because it makes it much easier for chatting. I'm, I'm so I'm, glad because I'm, I'm steaming up at the sight of you. Yes, I, well, I am. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> It's a, little, it's a little bit warmer than you think out here, isn't it? Must be the, just the time of life. No, how lovely, lovely to see you, Jim. It's amazing. Tell me about this ivy. They've got this problem with ivy in the house. What do you do about ivy? Well, some would say don't plant in the first place. Well, that's true. <laughs> but, I, I suspect they didn't plant like that. Everything else it has to be controlled and, uh -huh. and maintained. And, uh, if you leave it until it's uh, the, that the wall's crumbling, you know, you've just gone a bit far. And Plants and have a habit of, of making themselves comfortable. Yes, make themselves at home, don't they? Because, yeah. I mean, it, it, there's, you see, there's some, I think, probably growing up some of these yes. fine trees yes. as well. Yes. You, just, you just snip it and it, hope it, it dies back. It does a wonderful back. job. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 once it's rooted into the walls, it's quite a difficult thing. To and and is, is there a, is there a, a, a chemical, a, a poison or something that we're allowed to use nowadays? Because a lot of the poisons have gone off the in, list, haven't they? Indeed they are. The yes. choice is very, very limited nowadays. Yes. But the material which contains glyphosate right. is still legal. I'm impressed you can say that. I couldn't say that with my teeth, but that's very good. Glyphosate. <laughs> yeah. I should see a dentist. Yes, yes, I think I should. I should. Probably should. Um, yes, I know. I, that's, uh, you get used to do that. You yes, see, you yes. don't mention trade names. Ah, she, all right, all right. And then they, they, all, they all move around and they yeah, become some yeah. other killer. But, but, but I mean, I've seen people get, get rid of it by uh, chopping off and then treating the roots with right. glyphosate. Right. And I have to say that, I, you know, when it's used as carefully as that, uh, that's fine. It's when they come to start spraying glyphosate from helicopters all over great acres of land. Yes, yes. I think that's going over the top. Yes, yes, I, I can't be doing this any good at all. But I'll mention it to the house. The little bit of glyphosate squirted around the skirting boards could probably, could probably deal with that, I think. On, on, on the growth. On the growth, on the growth. And tell me, I'm a marvellous garden. Everybody in lockdown, or everybody who's been lucky enough to have a garden, I mean, God forbid you're stuck in a flat. Uh, all this time must be hellish, but That's everybody true. is gardening, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. It but you would expect me to say it, you know, we are born to be gardeners. You know, yes. we've got to eat to live. Yes, but, but I think people have forgotten that, don't you well, think? Well, they have, yes. And, and sadly, people who are 
uh, living a life in, 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 in a great conurbation, you know, yeah, are yeah. further and away from. That's why they so treasure public parks and places like this to yeah, go to, yeah. to get a bit of fresh air. Yeah, yeah. But the fact of the matter is, gardening is like breathing. And, and, yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> and it's essential. And can you, I mean, if you live in the middle of a city, yeah. can you, can you, you know, have a little pot of potatoes or of a pot of Of course you can. you can. Yes, of course you can. I mean, I remember, oh, way back, son and daughter-in-law were living in Moscow, and I, they were about five floors up in it, and, and their window ledges were just full of little plant seedlings, yes. so they could have fresh greens. Oh, marvellous, uh, yes. So it is possible, yes. and a little bit more of a bother right enough, but... Uh, but you get something. But you can get something out Because I do think, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I remember people talking about loam and sieving, si you know, just sieve the soil, didn't yes. you, to make it all, all yes. perfect for your straight carrots and your straight parsnips, but... Well, uh, yes, that's what, that's what cultivation's all about. That's but then, perfect. But we're into a no-cultivation mode nowadays. And you so just shove it in and hope for the best. Well, yes, you don't dig the soil at all, you're spoiling it if you dig it. Oh, I see. So you just keep adding organic matter on the top. So who's the, the no dig philosophy? So, so how that organic matter getting in there if you're not digging? Well, it? as it as as it begins to be used up by the plant material, oh, right, you yes, know, it yes. disintegrates and it yes. isn't absorbed into the into the ground. And and the the, the flora and the fauna, more importantly, the fauna, uh -huh, uh -huh. pull it down there and, and make better use of it. Yeah. What and is what uh, exactly uh, is fauna? Big pardon. What exactly is fauna? The flowers, beast, the flowers. Beasties, 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 and nothing. Oh, beasties! Oh, 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 beasties. Okay, so that's amazing. I know you are. Uh, do you think this no dig philosophy? This is this is yes, the thing. I, is it I, much better for our I backs? I had a major conversion about four or five years ago. Yes. And it was nothing to do with having sore backs every time I was digging. But I suddenly realised you don't need to. Yes, you just uh, you can just. Some soils are a bit difficult, but for the most part. Cladding uh, clay would be tricky, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Can you? But yeah. then you keep adding on the top. The thing is, I mean, compost, that's important, but I always think the compost brings in that fauna again, those beasties, the nasty beasties, like rats and things like that. Well, I, th I think there's room for all of them. I mean, when some of them overdo it, then you might have to, when they start, start chewing away it. I, I, sat, I was speaking about it the other day there, I was planting out some cabbages, mm -hmm. and I covered them over with a bit of netting. Uh, it's winter cabbage. Yes, yes. And uh, I sat down in the sunshine just to take a wee rest and give my back a rest and all the rest of it. And within about, within about 10 minutes, there were butterflies trying oh. to get through that net. Yes. Cabbage, cabbage white butterfly. Yes, yes. So I quite satisfied, you see, that I'd frustrated the thwarted little, little rascal. <laughs> thwarted, thwarted them. Thwarted them. Marvellous. Marvellous. <laughs> go, go, go and eat somebody else's cabbage. Yes, I think they're on mine right this minute, actually, but a uh, uh, lovely idea. Uh, uh, Jim, it's marvellous. Looking at this garden, isn't yes. this an extraordinary view? I think this was once a potato patch. I think once they've it done this all well over potatoes. have been. It's changed since I was last year, I have to say. It's looking um, I mean, I did, I did have a spell of time when I served on the National Trust Gardens Committee, uh -huh. and we did a r the round, you know, regularly. Yeah. And I found that that was quite a good way to get to see places without being stopped every five minutes yes. to ask what's wrong with my carrots. Yes, yes. And this has changed. The, the, the design has changed. It's delight, absolute delight. I just think it's beautiful. And I think the outstanding one is the agapanthus. Yes, I'm there. glad you said that one too. I was adding something. I couldn't remember <laughs> what they were. I've got two little clumps clinging on in my garden. And it's lovely to see them like that. That gorgeous blue with yeah. this thing. It's, it's just a treat. It's a treat. And it's a treat to meet you. And thank you so much. Um, I've got to go on now, on trotting around the house. And it's going to be busy, a bit nippy. Busy, busy. It is busy. I, I, I'll probably take this and then I can do a little bit of cobweb work as I go. Well, but uh, uh, it's lovely, lovely to meet you, Mr. McCall. I would shake hands if we could, but we can't. It's so, so inhospitable. Thank you so Happy much, garden. my dear. Thank you. And yes, I'll give it a go and I'll ask you about my carrots next time. Lovely. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> lovely to see you. A little bit of my bloom is showing, I think. Well, bloomers and gardens go together, don't they? I think so. I don't think he'll, he'll have seen a bloomer before in his time, no doubt. Ah, this is the morning room. Isn't that charming? It must catch the morning light. It's very, very homely feeling, I feel. The tiny, tiny chairs. I mean, look at that. Look at that sofa. I mean, if you sat in this, I don't think you'd be able to see out the window at all. Let me have a look and see. No, no, not a thing. You don't get the view whatsoever. How extraordinary. Oh, no, I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. It was probably designed by that very tall bloke on the chair, on the stairs, you know, Lord Haddo. It had been designed by him, and they were, must have been a very tall family with very tiny chairs. 
are extraordinary. It's lovely, lovely. I must get a wiggle on though, because I've only got an hour. Uh, good evening, morning, Rob. Nice to have seen you. And on we go. I think we'll just go round this way now. Yes. Oh, now these are the stairs that lead up to the Queen's bedroom, I gather. Named after Mary, Queen of Scots, when she stayed here. She really went about a bit, didn't she? I mean, she just stayed in every castle going, just dirtying the sheets for a night or two at a time. She would have loved Airbnb, I think. Right. There we go. There's the lift right there. Oh, and this is a dining room. Isn't that magnificent at all? Beautifully laid out. I mean, it's just designed for social distancing. What a pity we can't have tea here. Absolutely marvellous. And look at that roof. Look at that roof. That is just the most exquisite plaster ceiling. Yes. Let me just check on that. Oh, actually made from papier mache. Things are sound what they seem, aren't they? It doesn't look like papier mache to me, but that's what they say. And uh, uh, talking of which, uh, I'm just going to show. Oh no, I'm going to look at this first. Look at this menu. Oh, clear turtle soup, and then uh, calf sweetbreads à la financière. That sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? I mean, I know we didn't like bankers in the banking crisis, but we didn't actually eat them, did we? How extraordinary! And then quarters of quarters of lamb. To the quarters of lamb, how extraordinary. Oh, and this is the other thing. I wanted to point this out to you, ladies and gentlemen. This, this is the Raphael. There it is. They thought that was, uh, that was the Madonna uh, by Raphael. But then they've discovered that it wasn't. And it clearly isn't Madonna because there's no pointy undergarments at all. No, I'm no Madonna if I saw her. No, no. I should be so lucky, 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 lucky. I should be so lucky in love. It is difficult nowadays, I think, to recognise people because we're all wearing our masks. And, uh, and that's, you know, when you think about it, robbers wear masks so as not to be identified. And, uh, and so we're not recognised. It must be dreadful for the police. How can you tell who's a bona fide bank robber and who's just nipping out for their messages? How extraordinary. I find I've been suffering from mask envy. Uh, some of them are lovely, very sewing bee and very attractive. And you, you, I do rather think I'd rather like those. And then others... I don't like those pink ones that are flesh coloured because it looks like somebody's rubbed out their mouths, doesn't it? I made some for myself out of these uh, good, good solid ones, but talk about breathless. I could hardly breathe at all. Oh, is that midriff? I think that's midriff. I told her to wait. What's she doing here? Where would she be? She, oh, she might be in the lift. That's where she is, I expect. Hello, hello, midriff. What are you doing here? Oh my lord. I'm, I'm not sure how to get this lift going. Oh dear, I told you to wait in the car, dear, but sit tight, sit tight, don't go anywhere. Well, you're not going anywhere, are you? You're just going up and down. No, stupid woman, dear me. That, my friends listening at home, is my great friend, Midriff Bound. <laughs> For those of you watching at home, isn't that a funny expression? I mean, if you're not watching at home, what am I doing, really? I'm wasting my time. And if you are watching at home, am I bothered, frankly? No. And nowadays, you can watch anywhere, of course, if there's Wi-Fi on any platform. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, is it? Not Wi-Fi? Oh, well, whatever it is. But on any platform, not a station platform, of course, but on a, an iPhone or a tablet or anything like that. I find tablets quite confusing, actually, because I used to go to the doctor for my tablets. But now I have to see the doctor on my tablet and then she prescribes tablets. It's very difficult and apparently it's going to go on. And then you see, if I'm on my FaceTiming with her and I want to talk to her about my pain up here, my niggling pain, but actually what I really want to say is something else about something down there. I mean, how's she going to know that? It's very tricky. And uh, the other thing that is very, very strange is that I suppose I'm meant to feel my own glands, am I? I will rather miss and physical examination. I quite enjoyed a non-invasive examination, and now I'm not getting any of that. And we're not, none of us are, actually, none of us are. Not even the pat-down in airport security. No, I'll miss it. I don't get much physical contact, but I'm not getting any at the moment, no, no. Oh, waiting rooms. That's the other thing we'll miss about doctors, is waiting rooms, because you get more news in a doctor's waiting room than you get on the BBC. Oh, don't get me started on the BBC, though, because they're so negative, they're so miserable. And that dreadful thing they've done to the arches, I mean, what are they thinking? No, but actual doctor's waiting rooms, I'll miss those, but there, I have a plan, I have a plan for those. You know when you go to the doctors and you say to someone, how are you, and they say they're fine. And if they're fine, why are they there? Why are they wasting the doctor's time? If all the people in the doctor's waiting room said they were fine, went home, we would cut that waiting list problem at a stroke. 
I'm going to mention that to Matt Balcock because I think he'd like to know about that because it's a very, very useful thing to do. One of the things I do enjoy, I have to say, about this whole lockdown thing is the restrictions on numbers. I mean, say you're having a tea party and there's someone in the village uh, you don't, you should invite, but you, you don't want to. You know, call her, let's call her Sylvia Bottomley, shall we? Because that's her name. Anyway, you don't want her to come because she's a terrible gossip and she has got awful halitosis. And now you can say to her, Sylvia, I'm very sorry, but you're not invited because Nicola says no. Too many people. It's most satisfactory. And another thing, I'm trying to find all the good in this COVID. I really am. And there are some good things. I mean, we're all appreciating nature more. I mean, look at those trees. Look at those magnificent, a huge, huge copper beach. And, and we're all getting out and exercising more. And we're, well, some of us are, not all of us, of course. We're all on bicycles and cycling and things. Like, we're more aware of our neighbours and community. That's good. What else? Oh, wild swimming. What is wild swimming, incidentally? I mean, I think we used to call that, I think we called that swimming, didn't we? I think so. That you just saw a pool and thought, that's nice. And you shuggled into your cosy and in you plunged. And it was lovely. Never a bikini, of course, only ever a one piece. But now, now, apparently, I'm put, meant to put on a, a wetsuit. I mean, imagine me in a wetsuit, for goodness sake. What do you think? No, don't, don't do that, actually. It'll put you off your tea. But, uh, but no, it's an odd thing. Another good thing, though, another thing I'm enjoying is I think I've become diary intolerant. Not dairy intolerant. No, no, I can eat milk and yogurt and whatever without irritating my bowels whatsoever. No, no, but diary intolerant. I find it got annoyed with writing things in my diary and scoring them out against two weeks later. So, uh, so I've abandoned it completely and I'm now ad hoc and random and impetuous, which is a good thing because I think I hear my next guest. Let's just peek in here. This is what's called the library, which apparently originally was the hayloft uh, for the horses. And uh, let me just have a look at this. this oh, yes, just come in here. You wouldn't believe they have the best, most well-read horses you can ever believe in here. Are we disturbing you? Hello. 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 Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, dear. I hope you don't mind. It just sounded so lovely outside. Do you mind if we just... We just enjoy a little bit of it. Uh, well, you're already here. Yes, uh, yes I'm in. Yes, I'm positively in. So just carry on. Just you ignore sure, us. Sure. Just ignore us. Yes, uh -huh. absolutely. Uh, are you doing? Are you doing something in particular? Are you doing a? We're doing a little tour of the house to show people some of the house. So that they. And are you doing something in particular? Well, I don't work here. I've got in the jacket. No, did you borrow that? Yeah, no, 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 no. I paid for this more money. No, we're doing the for the festival. You know. Oh, for the festival! How lovely! What yeah. a lovely idea! Right. Good, good. Yeah. Just carry on. That yeah. just makes perfect, doesn't oh, it? Yeah, lovely, yeah. lovely. Yes. On you go. Oh, do mind. It's all right. I should have asked. I should have asked. I do beg your pardon. Who are you? Well, uh, I'm Jamie, and this is Jamie. Roger. Yeah, Jamie McDougall. Jamie Williams. McDougall. And we've met before. Yes, haven't we? we have. Lovely, yes, lovely, lovely to have. see you, Doctor Williams. Lovely. And I am Martha Frogham. Just. Oh, oh, what are you singing here? It's um, it's Schubert. Schubert. Pardon? Yeah, you thought I sneezed. I did, I did. Yeah, I thought it was something wrong with your grapples. Frühling's Yes. Yes, I have to be terrible. It's, it's something about singers. We've got to be four meters apart, haven't we? At least that's why I'm, I'm wearing. Yes, to hear I think it. we'll move back. We'll move back okay. a little bit, and I'll get my uh, I'll get my opera glasses we'll out, this, we'll and then we'll do, enjoy it. No. We'll just do the second verse, Martha. Is that all? Yes, right? the second verse would be lovely. Yes, yes, please do. I just love this, this is just marvellous. This is how they do it.
live music in whatever language that was. That was just absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for disturbing you. Oh. I mean, have you, have you sung this day? Well, I've come closer because you're not singing that now. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm not speaking in gold or anything, so I think that you're allowed. I'll stand here and, uh, and just speak to you. So have you been singing recently? Well, I've not been singing uh, classically for a wee while. I, I was doing some other bits and pieces during lockdown, but... To cheer us up. Yes, yes, right. but yes. Th this is the first time I've had to sing a song, you know, it, it, with people around in a beautiful setting and live with a wonderful pianist. Isn't it marvellous? Yeah. It's, it's so nice to be able to do that because we've missed it, Mr. McGrew. Well, you know, I, I, I think that this song, the reason I chose this particular song is it's a song of hope. Oh, she It knows. says, Don't be frightened, don't feel tormented, things will change, things will be all right. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. There is good in this, there is good in this. We're going to get through to the end of this. And, and things are going to be all right. So that's a marvellous song. If it was only in English, we would have known that. But you've told us that now. So that's well, more or less, it's rough the words about. Yes, yes. Well, it's good, it's good to know, because I didn't understand the word. But it, it's nice to know that there's hope in there. It's a marvellous room, and it's delightful to see you. Thank you. I'm sorry to have interrupted. Very nice to meet you. You too, and you, Dr. Thank Williams, you. will no doubt meet again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, look, 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 there's a little magic door. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. It's quite difficult with the shopper. There we are. Oh, my word. Now this is what I call the back side of a house, isn't it? I mean, this is all the bits that you don't usually see, but it's good to see it. I'm just going to nip into this kitchen and have a quick look. But I'll come straight up. Oh no, 50s wallpaper, isn't that? It's so retro. I do hope it's good. We're all going to come back in the fashion. Right, now I'm just going to nip along here. And there's something else I took down. I'm sure it's set up from this. Oh my lord, midriff. <laughs> Perhaps they were already fulfilled, I don't know. But they really were extraordinary. They always referred to each other as, or everybody referred to them as we toi, which for those of you in Surrey is we too. Not, not, not me too, not a sort of choral version of me too. No, 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 no. But we toi, because they were a couple, as they are in most marriages. Except, of course, the wicked girl we met right at the very beginning. I do hope you've been listening, because this is all, all important, Josh, that I'm giving you most of it. It's not factual, but there we go. Anyway, so they built this, and they wanted it to be just another room in the house, apparently. And because they were quite full, they didn't want it to be one single nomination. It was going to be ecumenical. Sorry, it was going to be ecumenical. It's a very difficult word to say that. Anyway, I'm hoping to meet the Saint or two in here, or the bar, I suppose, the Saint or Trois. Let's go and see who we can find in here. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Yes, it is. Just exactly like another room in the house. It's just like my little sunroom. And there he is, the Reverend William Dr. Stalder. Lovely. It's very nice to meet a doctor face to face because, uh, but I have had a little problem recently. Is that, were you prepared to chat about that? Well, I, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, see you about any medical you know, oh. conditions, but I mean, I can talk to you about other things, but yeah, my doctor, oh, you're not, not, I'm not, my doctor's not really that, that great. Oh. I can't heal you of anything. I see, you're not a doctor, doctor, you're no, a doctor. I'm not a real doctor. Oh, I see, not a real doctor. You just call yourself doctor. I just call myself doctor. Well, they'll catch you one day doing that, I think. Yes, they, they don't like that kind of thing. So tell me, your Scottish accent is yes. unusual to me. I don't know where about you from. Um, Aberdeen, California. 
Aberdeen, yeah. California. No, from, uh, from California, but I'm not really from Scotland. Uh, from the States originally. From the state, from California? From California. And tell me, you come from sunny, uh, orange state, beautiful California to Aberdeen to Temethe. What brings you here? Well, the weather, um, for one, but no. <laughs> I, I love it. We, I came here in 2004 um, from, from the States uh, to Glasgow for two years and then moved up to the northeast of Scotland and it, it has been home since then. That's brilliant. That's absolutely marvelous. So you obviously enjoy it, don't you? It's obviously the, the right place to be. Now, when I came in here, I, w I was telling the young people at home, or the young might be old people at home, one hopes, I, I was telling them about this ecu, 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 ecu for a chapel. Ecumenical. Ecu what? Ecumenical. Ecumenical. Ec ecumenical. Ecumenical. Ex what exactly does that mean? So the ecumenical chapel means that um, people of all denominations, all um, stripes of Christian tradition, um, will worship together um, regardless of their religious affinity um, and draw together and worship God, um, yeah, and not worry about all the, the all those rules and regulations. All the rules and regulations. You're, you're one of this lot, and you're one of this lot. Exactly. Right. Those, those, those rules seem to cause wars a lot. Of those kinds exactly. of things, don't they? So, so this is a peaceful thing. It's brilliant, yeah, because we can we have more in common than we. Than we have that are different, and I think of like all the different people that were supposed to be here this year before yeah. before lockdown. There yeah, was a Baptist, there was a Catholic, there was an Episcopalian, there was even the dreaded Church of Scotland minister as well. Oh, um, well, that's well, not great, not great. Okay. We're delighted to have you, but that is that is marvelous, and it's lovely that that tradition has carried on. Uh, when when uh, John Campbell Gordon, he wanted it to be like that. They wanted it to be acute, 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 yes. yes. Yes, thank you. Many. Yes. And these, these marvelous uh, windows and things, I think they're down and they're, they're, quite, they're, quite, they're quite special. I think they look like they are, but if they're not, they are now, as we said that they are. So that's, that's absolutely marvelous. And tell me, in this whole coronavirus thing, it's been quite difficult for the churches, hasn't it? Incredibly difficult because people have been locked away and isolated from one another and yes. um, difficult to um, minister to folk when you can't be face to face. Yes, and, and then the church, it should be. Should be the point where people come together instead of people being pushed pushed away, and uh, it, it is. A, I think it is a real, a real problem. People have got around it with with Zumba and things like that, haven't they? Yes, I mean through technology like on Facebook or Zoom or oh, Zoom. Zoom, yeah. What's Zumba? Zumba? Zumba is a little bit dance. Oh, oh, dance at church. But, oh, you know, oh, I see. Uh, exciting. I wasn't expecting a little movement from my my minister. Very good indeed. Yes, very exciting that was. So, so Zoom and all these things. So there are different things going on to bring people together. The other thing, of course, that I wanted to ask was, in this time of, of virtual and actual, when we've had the, you know, virtual services and virtual, is God virtual or actual, do you think? <laughs> that is a really good question. It's, I think it's higher than my finger. Oh, um, oh, I see. So you're not going to ask that. I have to ask him. We don't have to ask him, but I think he's always actually there with us, regardless if we're virtual or in person. Oh, right. Okay. Excuse me, Merkel and Reverend Father, but the bride is outside, so I think I ought to start playing. Oh, of course, it is Dr. Williams. You know each other. Lovely, lovely. Just a moment, just before you speak, I'm sure she'll wait. Um, tell me about this organ, because it's very special. Oh, it is very special indeed. It's by Mr. Willis, a famous builder of the 19th century, and it came from London by rail. Good Lord, must have been very, very tall train. It's well, very tall organ, isn't it? It's a bit of a miracle. It's one of a pair of organs, and we don't know where the other one is, but it's twinned somewhere. Oh, my! So perhaps on your travels you might find it. Yes, or if anybody watching knows that they've got an organ somewhere like tell that. Us. Yeah, yeah, tell us, because we'd love to find it. It might be a popped in your attic. You'd hardly miss it, would you? But you never know. You never but know. it's a large instrument. In addition to the pipes, there are three keyboards and pedals, and it produces a very magnificent and loud sound, which is why brides like it. Lovely, and she's waiting. She's waiting. On you go. Thank you. On you go, yes. Parge. This is not the socially distanced tea I imagined in this magnificent room, but one can still have a little bit of class. Um, and in fact, not all of us have 
got silverware, but I did manage to produce a teapot. So uh, we'll just produce that there. Unfortunately, of course, we can't have everybody here because with this lot here, you're drinking teas and coffees. Put them away, put them, they'll be furious. None of that, none of that. As, uh, as T.S. Eliot would have said, I don't think he was ever here, but you never know. This is the way the tour ends. Not with a banquet, but a whimper. Oh, but there it is, right on cue. Oh, poor midriff. We could give her a cup of tea too, I don't think, I think so, couldn't we? Thank you. That's a very poor thing. She'll be parched in there. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end. There is one more thing though, for those of you who are keen on quizzes and that sort of thing, you nerds, um, that if you can look out for any continuity gaffes, uh, please do write in with them, answers on a postcard. There isn't a prize, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But for now, ladies and gentlemen watching at home, to quote the great John Ebden, if you have been, thank you for watching. Good night. I'll just take this to midriff. Oh, there we go. The magic of film. So seamless. Nobody knew you were even there. What's your kid? coffee cup, Kate? Lovely. She'll be parched, poor dear. She's been up and down that lift like a yo-yo. But we better get her out soon, I think. Thank you. Oh, I could have done with a cup of tea. I haven't even had to suck with my own. Here we are, Midriff. Just for you, dear. I'll put it outside when you manage the door. It's operator error. It's a very good lift. It's just Midriff's the problem. <sighs> oh, lovely. What a glorious tour that's been. Do I need my rain mate? I'm not sure. <laughs> No, I think we'll forget about that. I don't think we need that today. Lovely. Thank you all. Thank you all. Bye. Shadow Arts could not present this year's festival without the generous support of their funders. In a normal year, significant and vital additional income from ticket and programme sales would supplement the grant and sponsorship funding. However, this year's virtual festival will be available for free. So please, give what you can to enable them to carry on planning and delivering arts events at Haddo by visiting www.haddoarts.com and clicking on the donate button to give online. Or send a cheque payable to Haddo Arts to Haddo Arts Administrator, the Estate Office, Mains of Haddo, Tarvis, Ellen, AB41, 7LD. Thank you.